Okay, good afternoon and thank you for your patience. Um, I keep saying this, I'll, I'll repeat a lot of the things that I've said before. Uh, and as I said before, air is good stuff, it keeps us alive, we breathe it, it's elastic. Um, and it, it like, moves airwaves, which hit the tympanum, the eardrum, and that's what we hear. So um, let's, uh, let's just move some air. Let's use our instruments to make some sounds to start. Right here. <laughs> Please don't get so loud that you drown out the quieter instruments. Okay, over to you. <laughs> Thank you. 
we'll, uh, so we've warmed up a bit now. Um, mm. I wanted to talk about um, the notion of uh, one or two concepts and why music is uh, uh, its own area. In uh, the theory books, which is certainly one from the Royal College of Music in London, it starts with a picture of something shaped like that. And they say, this is a semi-bridge. Now, when people hear improvised music, they say, oh, it's abstract. But actually, having that visual representation of this is a semi-bridge is the real abstraction. So when people say this music is abstract, it's actually the opposite. It's very concrete. It is what it is. And if we're going to be authentic and make our work mean something, we have to recognize what this isness is, what this reality of music is. Now, when I said uh, in my lecture, I started my lecture uh, at the beginning of this week with a quote from Johnny Diani, anybody who talks about music is a liar, it's also possible to drop clues. So what I would like to do is say a word, and I'd like you to try and express in terms of sound what that word means to you. So let's try the word garrulous.
try another word, anger. <laughs> Mozart's string quartet in G, Kirkel number 387, one of six works dedicated to Joseph Haydn. Um, starts with Allegro Vivaci Assai, which means fast, lively, enough. And it's that enough at the end. It's fast and lively, but just enough. And that's quite a precise instruction. But I have to say that it's my belief that words uh, make smaller neurological activity in the brain than music. So, so in some ways, music is more precise. We're searching to find the logic within music, its own logic. We never completely get it because it's always moving away from us. For instance, if you hear a piece of music, one person might describe it as depressing. Somebody else would say, oh, it's very sad. Somebody else would say, oh, it's very sleepy. There are three distinct meanings for the same piece of, piece of music. So again, it comes back to your interpretation because sound doesn't exist outside, it's the air moving, it's you that makes the interpretation. And one of the things that makes your, apart from the fact that you're all different people, biologically, uh, DNA, all of this stuff, is that you also had different experiences. It's my belief that you develop your individuality in the womb and your musicality starts developing then. You hear the sounds in the womb, and that makes your own particular musicality. And that's what's so wonderful, is sharing that when you play with other people. So, let's now improvise again, and let's play what I said before, the quantalistic style, maybe more like John Stevens' Spontaneous Music Ensemble. Uh, where you're bouncing off each other in a single note, quantalistic, kind of short, short sounds, basically, staccato. And I gather that uh, you will be giving solo performances at some point. Uh, and this leads me to just want to talk a little bit about projection. It's not necessarily a question of volume, of dynamic. It's a question of projecting. When I started playing the guitar, I used to have it on this mm. knee and play like this. Very sensitive. Mm. 
But the sound just goes. So now I play the guitar like this. It's to project. And if you will excuse me, flamenco players, flamenco guitarists, talk about using the buttons. And actors, of course, always talk about clench and project. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that now are about our house in the deep bosom of the ocean. That's not loud, it's projecting. And the secret is not to be frightened. Nothing can go wrong, particularly. I once played at a, I was asked to play at an opening of an art exhibition many years ago. And I said to the organizer, um, well, I will play as long as people stop and listen to me, somebody's focused. Uh, and he said, yes, that's okay. When it came to the exhibition, Everybody was drinking wine. I was stuck in a corner like this. And they were all talking in front of me. So I moved the chair a little bit like this. And they moved away a bit. And then I moved a bit further forward. Until I was in the center of the room. And everybody was around talking. And somebody said, do you mind? Could you stop that? We're trying to have a conversation. <laughs> so I said, no problem. And I got paid and left. Big things don't go wrong. I wasn't killed or... Don't be frightened, have confidence and have fun. So, what I'd like to do now, and I did this last year here, and I've done this in uh, Munich, in Germany, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, in Bologna, in Italy, and also in the UK. Uh, we can call this the Musashino Spaceship. Now, there's a book by... Um, a Polish writer, Stanislav Wem, and it's called The Tales of Perks the Pilot. It's a science fiction book. And in this book, it describes one man alone in a spaceship in the outer reaches of the galaxy. It's very lonely and big, big space. <clears throat> so I want you to play the laminar approach. Um, and just think you're the sound of the spaceship, just big, just out there, alone in outer space. So let's try and make that. And please don't forget you're a group. Listen carefully to everybody and make this. You are the spaceship. <laughs>
out there, man. That's uh, out in the out in the galaxy. So, I now want you to imagine that's the sound of the spaceship in the outer reaches of the galaxy. So it's this very slow moving legato, whooshy swooshy thing. But I want you to imagine as well that you look out the window. Uh, this is where my logic goes slightly wrong because I'm not sure how you look out of the window of a spaceship. You go and pull the curtain or put your head out. Or... <laughs> Maybe not. But when you look out the window, you see these stars. You pass these stars. So there's suddenly little bursts of the quantalistic. And that's like as you go past a small cluster of stars. So what we're, what we're doing here, it's kind of representing the fact, oh, it's too complicated. It represents the fact that the universe is lumpy. It's not even. So you have these little aggregations of stars, you know, little bursts of quantalism, as well as maintaining this thing. And that's the journey. <laughs>
<laughs> so this hand is volume, and this hand is pitch.
think. Well done. Um, one thing I would say is let's make the, uh, try, try to grab the endings so we have nice crisp endings. Uh, because what I want to do with the um, Muschino spaceship is I want to do a fade ending. So finally, uh, let's put the instruments down and just improvise with our voices alone. And let's make it uh, frontalistic. Bop, beep, beep, like that. Okay? There's five minutes time to pack up and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a round of applause.